Hello and welcome back to Golly River Pottery. I have had a request recently to make a plate. So um, I'm going to show you guys how we do that. This ball of clay is about four pounds. I used about four pounds to make a plate. Uh, you can use a little less, but then you take a chance on having them be a little bit thin. So uh, the dinner plates are really pretty simple, but from what I understand, there's not a lot of them on the web. So uh, we're going to start by centering. Um, so I'm not using my centering tool this time. Uh, just give me a sec. Center this puppy up. Uh, the big expense for plates is not really the time involved in making them. They take a lot of clay for what they are, and they take up a lot of space in the kiln. Uh, not a lot of potters like to make them. I don't mind. I make a lot of plates, and personally, I love using my handmade plates. So, this is about centered. And the way I do it is with my fist. Same way I open my other pieces. Alright, looking good. So, need a pretty good sponge full of water. I'm going to put my fist right in the middle and I'm going to hold it on the center. And I'm just going to push straight down. down a little farther in the center and I'm going to pull straight out with my fist and just flatten her on out and I come all the way out to the edge these bats are 10 inch bats so if I make them if I make it a little bigger I mean 12 inch bats so if I make it right at the size of the bat it shrinks down to be a pretty nice size dinner plate and again it's about compression you always want to have a nice good compression so I'm just using my fist to flatten this plate out. Out to the edge, got to leave enough for the rim. And I just keep working my fist back and forth, flattening it out nice. Some potters will use a rib to get it nice and flat, but I try to just gauge it with my finger and this sponge. And back to the center again. There we go. Um, it's really a lot about compression. I've said it many times got to make sure those particles are nice and tight. So it's good to leave a little in the middle that you can press down so that you get a lot of clay packed into the center of the plate. So it's pretty nice and smooth and now I'm going to pull the rim up. I only do like one little pull on the rim. So um, that's it right there. That's the rim. But as you can see, when I pulled up the side, it left this little ripple here, so I've got it, I've got to smooth that back down in there. So still adding a nice compression. Going into the center. You can feel when there's little lumps and stuff when you're going across it. And again, I'm going to do my little trick on the rim. you got to have it cleaned up on the side for when you cut it off. Alright, and a little piece of plastic. Wrap that around the rim. They're a little tricky cutting them off, so I'm going to go all the way to that point. Around the rim. Now, I'm going to do my undercut. 
You're gonna use the needle tool. So, that. Now, to cut it off, I go ahead and take my splash pan off. Uh, by doing that, it gives it can get to my underneath it. I just push that one back a little bit. Get my wire tool out. Pieces of clay stuck on my hands. All right. And get it nice and tight down on the wheel head. And there we go. And cut that puppy off. And there is Lee. There it is. See the side? And these need to dry evenly. So I will wrap them back here in my damp box. It'll get wrapped in the damp box and it'll dry for a while there. And then when I take it out, I'll put it on one of these bats. I cut it off again. A lot of times you have to cut them off a second time. I'll cut it off and set it on here. So I will finish that up in the next video. Um, but once I get it to there, I wrap it in plastic again, and that dries it out evenly. If they don't dry out evenly, you get a little bitty foot on one side and a big foot on the other side, and there's really nothing you can do about it. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys later.